Welcome to Austin Stories. Today, Crazy Cheating X and HOA Karen team up to take down OP. Can you stop them? And then an evil mom is an HOA Karen that's absolutely insane. If you're not already in your car, get buckled up because this is going to be a wild ride. And also, all the videos are in podcast form. Search up the Austin Stories podcast on your local provider and I'll also put a link to it in the description. Vindictive ex-wife illegally signed application to the local HOA in my name. Posted by Spurred one last time. I'll start this off by saying my ex is vindictive as heck. We've been fully divorced since about right before the pandemic started. We sold the house we shared and I didn't have to pay her alimony because she cheated and we're in an at-fault state. It was as messy since D-Day. All of the stereotypes. First, the sobbing and then the trickle truth saying, I love you. It was just one time. Okay, it was two years. And then, the gaslighting followed by, I'm gonna take you for everything, before packing her crap and walking out. I feel like I never really knew the woman my ex was in all the time we were together. We were married five years and together for seven. And in two of those five married years, she had affairs with three other men. The final one being a foreign businessman out of some sort from what I could figure out. Yes, I got tested for STDs and was thankfully negative. Yes, she got pregnant by the final affair partner, and no, I didn't sign the birth certificate because I found out about all the affairs before the baby was born, thanks to a call from the first affair partner. My ex tried to go full scorched earth on me. But since we live in and were married in an at-fault state, she lost. We didn't pay equally into our house, and the equity was divided 70-30, so I got a pretty good cash payout when I sold our marital home to put as a down payment on a different house closer to my job. It's a bit of a downgrade, but suits a single guy in his 30s like me just fine. My ex did show up to my house once, but I refused to let her in. She barked and complained at me that I'd financially ruined her in the divorce. I said that if she was fully willing to do that to me first, and the witch had the audacity to say it should have been my life screwed over and not hers. I laughed so hard and said it was karma. She yelled that she'd sue me for what was rightfully hers. I said if she was going to sue me, then to go ahead and sue me. It ended up the same way in court because she had nothing but a false sob story. She was the cheater, not me. I'm no angel, but I didn't do anything to her. And then she was the one who ruined our marriage. She then said that she'd tell everyone she could that I abused her. And I said that I'd sue her for defamation if she did. And I was recording our interaction and had those words saved to my phone. She went wide-eyed and her jaw dropped. The look people are calling the surprised Pikachu face was this. Then I asked why she was there, if not to just try and make trouble, because she had a new man in her life that knocked her up. She just huffed at me and said he isn't around much, and she's stuck in a tiny apartment living off his child support till he comes back. It was immature of me, I know, but I did the bit of playing the world's smallest violin. She yelled at me to go screw myself, and then I yelled back that I'd sooner do that than her any time. She raged at me and then got in her car to leave, I haven't seen her since. There's an HOA in my neighborhood, but I was not legally obligated to join it because the last owner of my house was not a member. I made sure of that through a real estate lawyer as well. The HOA had no grounds to force me to join and they were not happy about it. The HOA president would show up with forms every week for the first month demanding that I sign them. Then she threatened to take me to court to which I had to get a cease and desist sent to her from my lawyer to make her stop that. So she started harassing me by looking for any infractions that she possibly could to report me to the city. An inspector came out several times and found nothing wrong. In fact, I offered one of them a burger while grilling and they graciously accepted. Did I mention the HOA hates barbecues and parties that aren't approved in advance? Well, they do and I like to grill when the weather's good. And my neighbors actually love me for it because I invite them over. 
I had the police called on me several times for noise complaints because I was playing music on a Saturday afternoon while having my friends over. The HOA president I caught trespassing once when she was trying to peer into my windows. I called the police, but she denied ever doing it. So I got cameras. She hasn't trespassed since. But I still got repeated passive aggressive letters saying that my cameras were not an approved addition to my house. Some months ago, I started getting letters for fines in the mail. And when I contacted the HOA, their representative claimed that they had it on record that I joined and needed to pay all the fees effective immediately. I told them that that was not possible. And then they emailed a scanned copy of the forms and they had a signature on them. But it was not mine. It was very similar in some ways and I recognized right away as being my ex's handwriting. She knew what my signature looked like, but it was a loose imitation at best. I got in touch with a lawyer right away over the forged signature but the HOA still demanded to go to court, and it took seven months before that happened. Meanwhile, they were stacking unpaid fines against me weekly, and they were threatening to put a lien on my house. We went to court, and the HOA president looked very smug, but my lawyer pointed out how the signature wasn't the same as mine and was very inconsistent in the various forms. I'd never allowed the HOA president in my house, and I'd never requested the forms. The idiot HOA president actually slammed her palm on the table and said it was still binding. But when pressed where the fraudulent signature came from, she admitted my ex-wife called the HOA and they sent her the forms, then got them back in the mail signed but then she actually claimed she thought that I'd sign them. The judge looked at her and asked if she was serious, and she confirmed she was. The judge then asked how a woman I was no longer married to that had never even lived with me in my current residence was supposed to have any bearing on whether or not I joined her HOA. She went quiet, and I could see the Oh crap, look on her face as the hamster wheels were turning and she seemed to finally mentally put the pieces together. My lawyer then counterclaimed that what the HOA did was blatant fraud and legal actions must be taken. And they were. I countersued the HOA for the emotional distress of the harassment I've gotten since moving in, which I had lots of proof of. That won me about 10 grand after lawyer fees that I decided to put toward my mortgage. The HOA president was removed from her throne. I like to think she was kicking and screaming. She was also slapped with a hefty fine. I've seen her outside a few times and she always looks at me like I'm the devil. The HOA itself had to pay all of my legal fees too. I wanted to go after my ex for forging my signature. But I can't, because not long after she forged my signature on those forms, she apparently left the country to be with her third affair partner. She's uh, somewhere in Europe, from what I can see of the final post on her Facebook, before she disappeared. So I can't do anything against her unless she ever returns to the US. So that was a wash. I'm not getting letters from the HOA anymore though, and the new president has promised to keep things completely cordial from now on. I still don't feel like I got much of a win in this though. Other than the $10,000 payout, it all felt like a huge waste of time. Interesting comments here. Deleted says, statute of limitations, even if nothing happens because she's out of the country, get a default judgment since she will not show up to court. That may even block her from re-entry. And Crazy Supervisor says, it won't block her from re-entry, but she will be detained in customs. It will likely force her return as well because she won't be able to renew any visas because countries tend to not want each other's criminals and problems. Knowing this information, OP, if you are able to act upon this, you could still come out with an upper hand even though you originally thought you couldn't and then get that final pro-level revenge on the X or nuclear level if you wanted it to be. 
oh boy, like this was next multiple level. Like it sucks that the person that you married and trusted cannot be trusted anymore. And then you had that horrible fallout and you move to this new place. The HOA Karen gives you a horrible time as they always do, as we know. And then come to find out the ex forged the signature. So it's like they were on the team working together without knowing it. Or, or maybe they did know it. Maybe I, we don't know the conversations that happened between X and HOA Karen here, but I could just be curious and confirm to believe that they were probably sketchy and shady just knowing the past of these two folks right here and then she moves out of the country to go with random dude ah, this is just a crazy situation but at least the lawyer fees got paid out from the HOA Karen got dethroned and the ex-wife is in some other lands away from OP in the USA and then the $10,000 payout to take in pocket on your way I'm sorry you had to go through this OP but at least you have this resolution and put it behind you Gotta love HOAs, posted by Dragon Rider 1964. My great grandfather purchased about 3,000 acres of land in Florida in the late 1800s. This land has been in the family ever since, and there's been a family home on the property throughout. Land is zoned as agricultural, and we've raised livestock and farmed various items over the years. Ownership of the land has been passed down over the years, with the oldest getting the house. My father passed in 2000 and left the house to me, now my mom still lives in the house, and the land was split between three siblings equally, about a thousand acres each. My brother, who lives in California, and sister, living in Texas, quickly sold their lots to a property development company, about the same that I had purchased a neighboring lot, 850 acres, as my own. The development company quickly purchased a lot of land and began building family units, which are three, four, and five bedroom homes. This company repeatedly made attempts to get me to sell the 1,850 acres that I owned. They fought the county to get land rezoned so that I could not use it as a farm. That failed since I was actively using it and land became zoned as agricultural slash residential. In 2015, the development company completed the project and transferred control of the community to an HOA, which was registered in 2016. The Meat and Potatoes As soon as the HOA became officially recognized by the county, the board pushed to force me and my family to join. <laughs> nope, that is not happening. We have received visits from HOA board members explaining how we are in violation of the rules and how we must pay fines they have imposed. Fines have included livestock and farm animals not allowed, farm equipment left visible, unauthorized structures on site and we have two barns, three storage sheds, a detached three car garage and four covered feed stations for animals. They also said cars and vehicles not parked in a garage was a fine. The driveway was not properly maintained, unapproved fencing, the house painted the wrong color. They went to house trim, color not approved, front door style and color not approved, trees unapproved, lawn unsightly. They kept going and going with mailbox not correct style, mailbox not within community height standards. Fines started at $50 up to $1,500 and incurred massive late fees. And the biggest was, failure to sign the HOA membership form. Now, I am an attorney, however, I'm not versed in property law, so I hired someone who is. And she has been having fun. Cease and desist orders at least once a year. Several trespass orders against board members and the HOA itself. At least three court cases to get fines and property liens removed. As you can imagine, this has been trying. In January 2019, I filed plans and was approved to build a six-foot concrete and stucco wall running the length of my property. This wall will be five feet onto my side of the property line and will be maintained by me. The plans were on file and the HOA had time to contest them. In October 2019, work began. The side of the wall was leveled and this brought about the HOA to file numerous complaints for noise and unapproved improvements. Several times, the HOA made attempts to have equipment towed or removed even though it was parked on my property. 
In February 2020, the wall was completed, which included lighting and security cameras and a large decorative iron gate at my main driveway. I also had a new driveway installed. Figured that a nice, clean, well-maintained wall would make the HOA happy. Ha! <laughs> nope! I did not mow the 5 feet of grass along the gate as well as the HOA would like. I also did not bag the grass clippings. The wall was the wrong color, and my wife chose sand as it was a neutral color, and the wall was too high. HOA laws are 4 feet max. Since the issue with the virus, this HOA has had way too much time. They started by repainting my wall and sending me the bill. They started removing and disabling my lights and security cameras and sending me the bill. And, and they have a company that dug up and resodded the five foot strip of grass to the HOA requirements and sent me the bill, which includes a year of maintenance. My attorney nearly laughed herself into a coma. The outcome, it did not take long. The HOA, its board of directors, and the companies they hired were all ordered to appear in court. After hearing all sides and seeing all documentation, the judge ruled. The company that painted the wall has 30 days to repaint it the color that it was. The company that disabled and removed the lights and security cameras have 30 days to return them to working order, and the grass is allowed to remain. The HOA was ordered to absorb all cost. This includes the work they ordered and all the work needed to return my property to the way I had it. Further, the judge ordered that the HOA, from now until eternity, is to have no contact with me or my family. Now, I am going to request a permit to build a rifle range on my property. Oh crap, OP, this is a shining star example of someone who goes on, knows their stuff about their land, about their house, its history, what you can and cannot do, and then the HOA comes in, tries to bully you and take advantage. See, notice that theme right there, right? They came to OP and they just shoved him like, you're going to listen to us. Most people would say, okay, fine, fine, I'll sign it, I'll do whatever you want me to do, just leave me alone. Or, okay, you're scaring me, I'll, I'll do what you say, don't you know, mess me up, don't hurt me. Well, OP says, wait, that's a bullcrap. I know actually what to really do. And all of these fines that are meant to scare people, he fights back against, gets a lawyer, he's the attorney, blow, boom, boom, all this stuff. And then finally, everything falls on the HOA. They have to pay everything, get everything back in order, and then leave them alone. That right there is a prize in itself, is it not? And then he's going to request a permit to build a rifle range on the property. I don't know if that's a joke, but dang it, that's a good one. That's a nice move, OP. Congratulations, good job on standing your ground. Represent your family and way to go. When Evil Mama Bear Tried to Restart the HOA Hosted by Craigle Tom Now the neighborhood my mother's house is in had an HOA that was disbanded in the early 90s for the uh, pretty stereotypical reasons. Corrupt leaders, misappropriation of funds, and so on. I really don't have many details on it since I was very little when it went down. But my mother had apparently been openly aiming for a seat on the HOA council for years, so she was really sore when the HOA was gone because she could no longer run for a position. Fast forward to 1999. Evil Mama Bear had been trying to quote the old HOA covenants to the neighborhood for years and insisted that the rules and regulations set forth when the HOA was active should still be abided by. Literally no one wanted to listen to her. So my mother started putting flyers around the neighborhood that detailed that she was restarting the HOA without their approval and would be its first new president. The neighbors ended up in an uproar over this and showed up to her public meeting. And there, she was verbally ripped to shreds as nearly every single homeowner in the neighborhood not only denied their support of another HOA, but also made it clear to her what she was trying to do was not legal. My mother was incensed by this, and no surprise, she didn't even have my father's support, which was something that she'd initially been counting on. But he refused from the onset of her scheme, and when the neighborhood all refused to recreate the HOA, evil mama bear went off on my dad for not being supportive of her. After she gaslighted herself into nearly being out of breath, my dad told her she was just looking for a way to lord over the neighborhood, and he'd never support that. She tried to argue with him some more, 
but he just ended the conversation and walked away. Somehow, that still didn't stop my mother, though. She went and contacted a sleazy lawyer about trying to get the HOA running again without the support of the residents. Her hope was that there was some sort of law that could reactivate the HOA on different grounds. The lawyer went through all of the old HOA documents and state laws over a couple of days and told my mother there was nothing that could be done as it was not enforceable and that without the consent and signed support of enough people in the neighborhood, there was no way to legally restart the HOA. Then proceeded to bill evil mama bear for the time he spent looking through all of that. Since my mother hired the sleazy lawyer herself under the table, she had to pay him. But she hated paying anyone for anything because she was so cheap. Now, an important fact of note was that my dad hadn't trusted Evil Mama Bear with his money for years and no longer kept joint bank accounts with her. And so, she had no way to access his money. So she filed for a new credit card using his name and then used said credit card to pay the lawyer instead. My dad noticed a new credit card statement in his name pretty fast and nearly filed for fraud when my mother came clean out of fear. He demanded she pay off the credit card and then have said card deactivated. My mother didn't want to, but he threatened to call the fraud department of his bank on her. I still remember hearing the argument where she tried to claim that he couldn't do that because they were married and that everything that was his was also hers. That meant that she could do what she did and he'd still have to pay. Dad called BS on that and said that he'd contest the charges and get the card removed from his name, which would have left my mother in some serious legal trouble for fraud and debt collection. And so, Evil Mama Bear begrudgingly paid off the money owed, and my dad cut the card to little pieces with scissors. My mother had the money to pay the lawyer all along. She just preferred to keep the cash and put any expenses she could on my father. But he always stopped her, and she tried to pull the shared assets logic because they were married, though that ended when they divorced. Evil Mama Bear still spent the next few years trying to quote the HOA covenants to neighbors, but she was always dismissed or laughed at every single time she tried. A few people started referring to her as President Wannabe. To this day, no HOA has formed in the neighborhood again, and even if one did, they'd never vote in Evil Mama Bear. I can only imagine what would happen if she tried to pull this crap in Texas after she moves there. Now, I've had a few people messaging me that the lawyer I spoke of in the story that my mother went to wasn't sleazy just by association with my mother and just did what normal lawyers do. Well, he was known by reputation to overcharge people. And my own lawyer told me some time ago that he had first-hand experience with the sleazy lawyer because he knew him in person. The guy would intentionally take longer than needed to do anything so he could charge more time from clients. That, among other shady things he did, bit him in the butt some years ago and he shut down his office. Oh man, just when you think an HOA Karen is bad enough, it's your mom. Oh, OP, I am so sorry to go through that. And then the battles with the dad over the finances, being like, I'm just going to make use and abuse this marriage covenant here and then just do what I want to do and say, we can do it because I'm married and, and then blah, blah, blah. Karen, seriously, you thought you're going to get away with opening up a new card with the guy's name charging a shady lawyer when the guy, the dad, is financially financially savvy in the first place and just why does it seem like all these HOA Karens never think it through seriously they just never do and it all comes back to bite president wannabe evil mama bear right in the butt just like it did her shady lawyer that she was with I don't know if she was with she wasn't with him with him but you know what it wouldn't surprise me if she was huh OP I am so sorry but you came out ahead of this I sure hope corrupt HOA Karen breaks the law <laughs> so we lawyer up Click the video on your screen so you don't miss this great story and I will see you there.